Pro Wrestling Podcast. Samoa Joe. Old fashioned slap right to the face. What the hell are we? That's open hand slap, huh? Distractions. Oh, Too many distractions. And I gotta apologize, I'm a little late this morning, my mother did not set my alarm clock. This is the best pro wrestling podcast, my name is Tommy Stryker, and yeah, we are a little bit late this week, but it's not because our mothers forgot to set the alarm, it is because of other reasons, we'll get into that in a second here. Joining me via satellite this week, Joe is here. What's up? And Taco. What up? And, uh, yeah, we got uh, Joe and Taco coming from home. We're recording this on a Thursday instead of a Tuesday like usual. I had uh, some, on a Thursday. I had some family <laughs> in town, and uh, I, I, it was crazy because I, from between Monday and today, I watched absolutely zero wrestling. So, like, today, I did, wow. I did like, the crash. Sacrilege. I did the crash course on everything. I, I listened to some recaps of Raw and SmackDown. I read some stuff on NXT. I, uh, I, I, I watched like the last five or ten minutes of each of the G1 Climax matches from Tuesday. Up until Tuesday, I was all caught up on the G1 Climax stuff. And then finally today... See, the G1's about the only thing I've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and the G1's been hot, by the way. Uh, I want to apologize right off the bat for last week's two-hour extravaganza. Some of our most dedicated listeners tuned in for the two-hour uh, show and downloaded it. Thank you for checking that out. Uh, some of you did not. Maybe you maybe you saw that it was a two-hour show and said, ah, not for me. Or maybe, uh, I'm thinking maybe a lot of it, what of it was, was, hell, it's the middle of summer, and it, there's things going on, and there's not always time for wrestling podcasts. So I think that was part of it, too. I mean, as evidenced by the host of the show, I had to put wrestling off for, for family this week, and that's what a lot of people have to do. Uh, and so, but that's what we're here doing now, getting everybody caught up and getting caught up our Ourselves. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna talk Raw SmackDown. We're gonna talk the G1 because uh, we're going into the last three days. So that means the the finals for the A block, the finals for the B block coming up on uh, Friday and Saturday. So yeah, by the time you hear this, the Friday show will probably be available, and uh, so yeah, you can get into it there. Uh, so we'll get into uh, what to look for those uh, last couple of nights. We got English commentary there. The road for summer. Slam is heating way up. We'll talk about that. The uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit of uh, NXT because the Takeover Brooklyn's coming up, of course. SummerSlam weekend, so so there's all of that. Well, let's jump right into the Monday Night Raw stuff, shall we? Change the subject. Monday Night Raw. Don't often talk about this on the podcast, but every time I play that Monday Night Raw sounder, Joe and Taco do this little uh, dance, I guess, in the studio. <laughs> and, but since they're not in studio, I'm just curious if the air drumming was going on at home since I played that sound bite. Oh, because- here. oh yeah, oh, it there, is. There Absolutely. I, I could see, I could see uh, Taco on the, uh, the Hangouts connection there. I'll, okay, so cool. Good to know you guys were doing the... Uh, the uh, the dance the the air drumming yes you got and it. Joe is also it watching two hundred five um not live <laughs> is, yeah are, I am also watching two hundred five not live <laughs> are you actually watching that right now yes <laughs> nice so I think I, I, is it safe to say Joe are you the only one that watched the full three hour raw extravaganza well I, I did like the first two, uh, couple hours but I spaced out towards the end and clipped a lot of the rest. Right on. And Taco, did you, I'm, I'm right in assuming you kind of did the same thing that I did and kind of caught up I on the clips? I watched most of Raw. I missed SmackDown. Okay. Kind of read up on it, but I got halfway through NXT today. Right on, right on. Well, you guys I got, got... I got through the promo part of it, so I got that at least. Cool, cool. Okay. Well, back to Raw. It was. It actually sounds like a pretty good damn Raw this week. It was uh, decent. Good. From uh, from what I read and and the clips that I saw with uh, well Lesnar coming out at the beginning and fucking destroying the Miz Taraj, uh, <laughs> a, a nice segment there, uh, leading into of course to the big main event between Strowman and Roman, the last man standing match. Uh, but let's talk a, a little bit of Lesnar here. They're really driving the point into our brains that 
uh, yeah, this idea that if Lesnar loses, he's taking his ball and going home, and that uh, the, the point that they're really driving in is that he doesn't even have to get pinned to lose the title at SummerSlam, which makes me believe that he's probably just going to win it anyway, especially with the, the stip that he said that uh, if I lose, I'm leaving, and he's under contract well through uh, WrestleMania next year. So what are your guys' thoughts on the, the Lesnar threats and the, the, the pounding the, the idea into our heads that uh, Lesnar can lose without being pinned at all? Taco, you well, go ahead. Well, I feel like um, he's maybe speeding up the process. I feel like he has the, the appearance on his contract, too, and he's kind of been popping up a little bit more when you'd least expect him to. For sure. Especially leading up to SummerSlam, so he's probably just trying to get rid of some of those parents. But I don't know it's pretty interesting because you have John Jones out there tweeting. He's like, maybe I'll get a front row seat for SummerSlam. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so you know, it's it's fun that he's poking the bear a little bit. For sure, sure. Joe, thoughts on the on the Lesnar and the Miz Tourage and and where they're going on SummerSlam with all of this. See, and it just makes me think it could be literally a split time decision up to SummerSlam. But I like. If he's planning whether to fight John Jones or any other UFC fighter, I think he's going to get back in the octagon, meaning he's going to need a break from the WWE for a while. The issue I, that I've heard uh, with with Brock getting back into the octagon doing MMA at all is that first things first, he has to get back into the testing pool uh, for the uh, the USADA. So that yeah. and and once he does that, then he has to finish serving out his suspension because he got suspended after his fight last year and then before this the uh, entire well, that's system- up in december so well n- only if once he has to enter into the uh into the testing pool again which he hasn't done yet and so mm. it, it it only that clock only restarts again once he enters into the drug testing pool so he has to do that and then the clock starts ticking on that but then it, so yeah like you said even if he went in right now we're talking uh, you know december or january but then you, jan- from january to, to to april is wrestlemania season and wwe is going to want to be using him all all of all of the time so well, he wants that payday too exactly but his mm-hmm. I, I believe his current wwe deal is is uh, ending after this year's WrestleMania. So he could do through WrestleMania, go do a UFC show next uh, late spring or summer. Uh, Obviously with a camp with doing an MMA camp, it would probably be a, a a July, uh, 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 a fight for MMA or for the UFC next year. So we're really talking about a year out probably oh, before sure. before Brock could even uh, con- uh, conceivably get in the ring with his current contractual ob- obligations and uh, the, uh, the the suspension uh, stuff that he has to deal with as well. Let's talk uh, the the main event: uh, Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns, a last oh, last stand, uh, last man standing match. Joe, go ahead. Sounds like uh, you've got some things to to say about this one. It, it's just it doesn't matter if you hate Roman or not. Just watching these two just beat the piss out of each other is <laughs> it's entertaining. It's like watching AJ Styles beat up John Cena. <laughs> right on. What did you think of the finish? I, I did hear a little bit of criticism and uh, just because uh, so Samoa Joe ends up choking out Roman Reigns uh, the whole time. Braun Strowman is laying flat on his back without the referee counting. Uh, so finally, the referee does start counting while Braun has been down for what uh, appears to be almost a 20 or 30 count uh, <laughs> because no referee was counting him down. But uh, Braun does get up at the eight or the nine count to win the last man standing match a lot of people giving the promotion heat because they do so many of these these uh anything goes matches no disqualifications anything goes so it's like you said joe they're they're out there beating the shit out of each other for 20 minutes and then (laughs) instead of having this satisfying finish here comes samoa joe out of nowhere uh you know kind of fucking up the finish or whatever or just you know what are your thoughts on that I, I just see it as typical WWE right now. With <laughs> yeah. so with how much with how much good wrestling is out there, it doesn't bug me anymore because I know that there's something to challenge it to make me, you know, go somewhere else at this point. Taco, any thoughts on uh on that, on the big main event there? Uh you can't look too deep into it. I mean I'm surprised that they gave us those two in a last man standing match. Right, uh, two weeks before SummerSlam, so that was pretty fucking dope. And those guys tore it up. Right on. So I don't know. It's just 
I, I can't look too deep into it. It was a good fucking show. And the thing that sticks out to me is that chair spot. That chair spot was so fucking good. And that chair just like a dart into fucking his face. Well, and how about like, every, everybody's awesome. everybody speculating now? Now, did did they steal that spot from Evil and Okada in the G1? Because they did do it first, like about a few days earlier. They like Okada they was did. They did. Okada was going for the big dive over the uh, over the over the railing, and then Evil just whips a fucking chair at him. So I. I, when I saw the I saw the gif of that on uh, Monday or Tuesday before I'd actually had a chance to see any part of Ron, like oh shit, they stole Evil's spot. So right. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of funny, uh, but yeah, it was it was a really cool spot in the match. Uh, and now a lot of people are speculating that next week on Raw we might get Samoa Joe versus Braun Strowman because that's a matchup that we have not seen in this build up to SummerSlam. Would you be excited to see that on a Monday Night Raw, or should that be saved for something bigger? Especially since they haven't really announced something like that yet. I think it ends in like a bullshit decision, the same as the last man standing, but it gets <laughs> it started. It gets the idea in our head that Samoa Joe Braun Strowman could be a rivalry in the future. Right on. Let's uh, let's talk the the Ambrose and Seth Rollins uh, saga that kind of went on during the show. I can't quit you. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit of that. I I, uh, I kind of liked what they did here this week, and I kind of didn't like it too, just for a couple of different reasons. So uh, what was it? Uh, Rollins has the the early match with Sheamus, and uh, the story here was afterwards the bar. Uh, Sheamus answers all. Oh, da 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 da. They beat up uh, Rollins after his match with uh, Sheamus and uh, Ambrose doesn't come out. And so later on, Ambrose is having the match with Cesaro. They have a really good match. Uh, but then after the match, again, Sheamus and Cesaro with the beatdown. Then Rollins comes out and saves uh, 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 Ambrose from the from the beatdown. And Ambrose offers the, the fist bump that, uh, that... Pound it, bro. Pound it. Right, and Rollins has been desperately wanting this fist bump so bad. And so is the audience. They've been wanting it so bad. But Rollins just walks away this time because the story is is that Rollins is pissed off that he didn't come and help him out. Even, even though after last week he came and helped him out, he, what he he kind of called him an asshole in the back after the first uh, the first part of the of the of the night or whatever. So uh, where where are you? At? Obviously, he's not willing to do anything for his bud. Obviously, <laughs> so they burn that shit down. Are, are they gonna are they gonna make this up next week and be, finally become the team so they could take on the tag team champions at SummerSlam or where are they going with this one, Taco? At this point, I wouldn't be too butthurt if they left Sheamus and Cesaro off SummerSlam. There's so much going on. <laughs> it, it's gonna be like, a, it's I, gonna be a four hour show with a two hour pre show though, so there's plenty of room for oh, eleven, geez. twelve matches, whatever we've got speculated. here. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, it definitely looks like the way that's going, but I don't know. Just fucking just team them up already. Like, these are two of the biggest badasses, and they're just so just like, I fucking, I'm waiting for the emo part on fucking like <laughs> Dean's face and like some eyeshadow and Rollins. Like, yeah, damn, like the fucking goth kids on South Park. And it would have been such a cool, awesome moment when if. If if Rollins would have just bumped fist, the crowd was was hot for it. They were it was it was the moment that Rollins wanted last week, and so it, it, there was a little bit that didn't make sense there. I mean, I get it was the story that they were telling throughout the show, though, too. But are you, what are your thoughts on it's that, Joe? Just so fucking cheesy. I, see, I, I actually enjoy it. I guess I just enjoy cheesy shit like that. Yeah, like Cars too. <laughs> All right, uh, Bailey is out of SummerSlam with the uh, sh- separated shoulder injury, uh, thanks to Nia Jax and her safe moves. Uh, so it's uh, th- <laughs> I did like what they did to set up the uh, the number one contendership. So they had two three way matches with uh, Sasha Banks winning one, Nia Jax winning the other, and we're going to get the number one contenders match next week between those two, and the winner will face Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam. What are your thoughts on this one, Joe? Uh, I mean, I, I mean, what else could you ask for at this point? Just you know, a couple weeks out from SummerSlam, you're trying to build a story against with these two perfect, you know, heel babyface combination, and it just you know it gets tossed with an injury. I think they covered pretty well and put on entertaining matches as well. Taco, you know, like <laughs> putting Nia Jackson this 
spot right now like almost hurts the shit that her and Alexa Bliss are building up. Yeah, I like heard- it's built some like sourness between them. It's like I've really been liking the shit they've been doing like online. Like the, they're fucking great. They're like Calvin and Hobbes in a sense online. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I- it does kind of contradict the on the uh, the on air storyline with the the real life best but friends. Even acknowledge stuff. it too. Backstage, and I think I would love to see this kind of you know move over onto you know the show a little bit. You know, like it's just the the shit they're doing with Nia Jax is not working. The only time i'm willing to fucking give her any of my attentions when she's being her you know right like, right and that samoan fucking you know joy come out of her <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's well, just it's, go ahead it's just do, doing what they're doing right now it's just like they're already putting heat between them it's like for like yeah like i think it's just so obvious that that's not you know great. like yeah go ahead like Jim. you can't be nia jackson just that it's so obvious that Sasha Banks is going to win it. I don't think it hurts that in that sense that they can just, you know, start that up immediately once Sasha beats Nia. I don't even know that it's obvious at this point. I mean, it does feel like that's definitely where they're going, and that's probably where they should go with the last match between Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss at the pay-per-view where Alexa they had a really awesome match, and Alexa Bliss walked away and got counted out. So that I think that was either great balls of fire or something else, or who knows. Uh, but uh, So they have a nice they have that nice little story there uh but i don't know that necessarily it, that they're just going to go right back to uh, right back to that story they that's probably what they should do but who knows well that's what i think all right uh other stuff from raw we uh, they didn't really address the scott dawson situation but uh he's he separated his, his biceps uh so he's oh. out for uh, for quite a while so where do where we do with the hardys and anderson and gallows just a straight up one-on-one uh who knows there uh tozawa his shoulder injury is all good now and he'll be taking on neville at SummerSlam. <laughs> uh, uh <laughs> big cast and big show uh we got enzo in a shark cage now at summer slam uh that's an interesting uh. <laughs> interesting it, it's it's it, it and again, the psychology is a little weird here too, because usually it's like the cheating heel that assists uh, his heel buddy that has to go. You know, the manager type that has to go in, in the shark cage. Your Paul Ellerings, of course. Uh, those those people of the world. So I guess the question is: Does Enzo drop uh, some sort of foreign object to assist Big Show, or does he drop an, a foreign object to assist Big Cass, and then he goes right back to being with? Big Cass and turns heel, or the third option, he tries to help Big Show. Cass intercepts, takes out Big Show. Taco, uh, are you as psyched to watch this shark cage match as the rest of the I, world? I hope what we see is Enzo drop a gold chain from from the cage, and it just magically like horseshoes around Cass's neck, and just. <laughs> he continues to wrestle with the gold chain, gold chain around his neck. Yeah, I'm calling brass knucks. And who gets the brass knucks, though? That's the question. Uh, it's definitely going to be Cass. Got to okay. build him back. Yeah. All right. Uh, Gold Dust says he's going to be looking for somebody. He's going to be doing some scouting at SummerSlam. Pa- what do you think of Gold Dust moving into a manager's role? As as, a, as it kind of looks like he's either looking for someone to manage, someone to team with. Uh, who knows? What do you think of what they're doing with Gold Dust Taco? What if he's the mystery assailant against Brazongo? Well, that would be interesting, being that he's on Raw and they're on SmackDown. Dual promotion. They're free agents, and it, it's it, right. And SummerSlam is a is a double show, so yeah, it, it could yeah, that certainly could be. <laughs> I mean, Jason Jordan kind of skipped over it just because you know his dad's Kurt Angle. Uh, speaking of Jason Jordan, he had that. Uh, what if that's the angle right there? Like <laughs> he's like like making Jason Jordan a freak, and the crane was like, "Fuck, this is my son!" Like ah, uh, like, <laughs> like the shame father. Like fuck, I don't want to bring him out, and like he's like always having to bail him out all the stuff, and he's like wearing freaky wigs and makeup all the time, and the gold, you know, gold dust is coming out with him. Like 
Yeah. Well, it looks like they're going to have to give up on whatever they're doing with Jason You're Jordan drunk. right now because that uh, the thing he did with Pierre Goulet, where I mean, I mean the WWE put him in a bad spot because if you're going to put him uh, put Jason Jordan out there and he's supposed to be a babyface, but uh, it's this it's this dumb father son angle, and uh, you put it, you put him out there with a Canadian and they're in Canada. Uh, obviously, the Canadians are going to go for the Canadian, even though he's the jobber and of course they're not going to be into the silly jason jordan storyline I, I love the the back the, the angle on the back where, where he just found the guy just stretching it was like what the fuck <laughs> yeah it's an interesting, it, though. Like, interesting it so way to get, get a guy into a match yeah uh but yeah a lot of people are speculating that the whole jason jordan thing is going to end up being a ruse on kurt angle and he's going to go heel on that what do you think of that taco um, that's neat. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, super neat. <laughs> all right. Neat. That's all I want to, that's all I got from Raw. Anything else, you guys? <laughs> uh, not that I can think of. We're probably forgetting something. Uh, probably. Probably not. Change the subject. <laughs> Let's get into SmackDown Live. SmackDown Live! Please. I'm going to make this a tag team match. I didn't watch uh, much of SmackDown either, but I did watch the uh, John Cena uh, Baron Corbin promo. Uh, I did like that. I liked Cena kind of taking Corbin to school a, a little bit there. Him uh, paying some respect to uh, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, Corbin coming out and doing his usual uh, uh, ba- bag of mashed potatoes promo. Uh, <laughs> uh, Cena calling him a, a, a what, what was it a skinny fat <laughs> or, or whatever it was it an interesting line there uh, but really didn't get me any more interested in this as a match and obviously with uh, Daniel Bryan coming out and making it the match for SummerSlam I expect this to be a, uh, a Cena a victory, a whoop ass a uh, yeah I don't think uh, Corbin's getting much out of this one I don't know what are your thoughts Taco you know I'm um, I'm really hoping Corbin loses due to like disqualification or something only because I don't want him to lose and then cash in later that night. Because <laughs> well, like I'm really like wanting Shinsuke to win. <laughs> I think a that lot sounds of, horrible. I think a lot of people want Shinsuke to win. Uh, me uh, among count me among them, but I don't think that's Absolutely. I don't think that's what's going to happen. But no. I, could, I could see, and I don't think Corbin is going to cash in against uh, uh, Jinder Mahal either, because that would be a, a, a lead to people cheering for. Maybe gender, actually. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe that. Maybe that's exactly what they're going for. <laughs> but but uh, yeah. But it's, it's certainly a possibility. Uh, people are speculating that uh, WWE has a, a tour of Japan coming up. Do they put the title on Nakamura for that? Wouldn't be mad at that. But I, I don't know. I just I don't see it happening. I don't think they're. I don't think they see him at that level. His promo from. Uh, Do they see him beating John Cena to go face? Jinder Mahal for the WWE <laughs> Championship at SummerSlam. That's true. I, I, did, I did see that, but uh, but talk about Nakamura's promo. Uh, him him saying that he, his whole career he's wanted to be in WWE. It, it just it just it felt so ingenuine. It just let's script Nakamura, but since he can't do a scripted promo in the ring, let's do it backstage. I I, I didn't like it at all. I'm very sour today. I don't. Know. It was just it was just really clunky. It didn't feel natural at all for him. I mean, b- by scripting him, it put I mean, he's already awkward enough. When you script him and put a structure on him, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Any thoughts on that taco? I actually did not see it. Okay, okay. Well, it's everything you could have imagined and more. <laughs> the uh, Usos, the Usos beat Ty Dillinger and Sami Zayn, just kind of a thrown together Canadian tag team uh, versus your top heel tag team. Nothing much to talk about there. We did have more fashion peaks. Uh, Fandango. Oh said, yes, we did. <laughs> Fandango said he was abducted by aliens and he could have left any time he wanted. Uh, but then he uh, he lets uh, Breeze know that the next guy to come through the door is the guy that killed Tully the horse, and of course it was 
uh, Arn Anderson, who uh, destroyed Double Tully. Double A, the Enforcer, took a couple of donuts and took off. Is the the Fashion Files is it is it growing old? Is it is it overstaying its welcome? Is it the golden truth of 2017, Joe? Not to me. I am in every week. I can watch <laughs> this for weeks upon weeks upon weeks. And I think that's what they're going to do to us. They're going to keep giving us this almost cliffhanger, and then it's going to turn out to be nothing. Uh, Taco? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's funny as fuck, man. Keep it going. They're enjoying it. Everyone's enjoying it. Uh, there's a, Joe said he, he enjoys it week after week after week. There's definitely a Cars 2 line in there somewhere. Uh, Char- Charlotte <laughs> defeated <laughs> Lana rather quickly, but uh, Tamina uh, still wants uh, some sort of help no, from no. <laughs> Lana. Yes, of course. T- <laughs> uh, Tamina uh, <laughs> thinks that Lana has some sort of superpower, I guess, because she was able to get uh, title matches two weeks in a row, and she's such a loser. Uh, <laughs> I-, I liked Lana said something to the effect of, uh, I want to be as fierce and, and as great of a fighter as you are. And, 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 and maybe she's fierce. Maybe she's a great, quote, fighter. But boy, she's not a very good pro wrestler. So I, <laughs> so these two being paired together is, 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 uh, is, is clunkier than, I don't know, Nia Jax uh, uh, trying to hit a body slam on somebody. I don't know. <laughs> not very good with the analogies today. But uh, and, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Any thoughts on it's Lana? It's neat. Um, it's neat. <laughs> Ten four. Naomi versus Carmella. Carmella, of course, the Money in the Bank winner. Naomi, the current women's champion. So, of course, this was a non-title matchup. Uh, uh, James Ellsworth is back. He's off of his suspension. He scared Naomi off the top rope. She fell off at the sight of James Ellsworth. Carmella gets the distraction victory. Distraction. Oh, Too many distractions. And, uh, yeah, James <laughs> Ellsworth is back. So, uh, so we'll, we'll get something there. It is going to be Naomi. Naomi versus Natalia at SummerSlam. So I am actually looking forward to that match itself. I think that should be yeah. a good match. But again, Naomi was in the in having a match with Carmella doing those awful looking kicks again. And so, yeah. I, uh, so she brought the bitch slap back again. I, well, that that's a nice touch too. So I, I, I will not yeah. she, now if she could do it like Minoru Suzuki and Kazuchika Okada. Oh then, God, <laughs> we'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, uh, finally we had the uh, AJ Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon kind of promo thing, and it was just teasing the idea: Will Shane McMahon remain neutral in the match? Of course, we've got the tension between Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon. They kind of harkened back to the uh, build up to Russell. Mania, where it was AJ throwing Shane McMahon through car windows and beating up Shane McMahon randomly. Uh, since after WrestleMania, uh, the uh, respect has been earned between the two. AJ, that was his kind of big baby face turn moment. But they did kind of do a tease where AJ inadvertently Pele kicks Shane McMahon. So the big question is, will Shane be neutral? Uh, it does a- add a little bit of intrigue, and this is a match I'm actually looking forward to at SummerSlam there. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Any <laughs> thoughts on that one, Taco? <laughs> no, I didn't see it. So, okay. um, I mean, you know, I can we stop putting just – I don't want to see Shane in matches. We got so many guys that are fucking great talent in the WWE name right now that, you know, he, he does do a good show, but he, we shouldn't need to rely on him to fucking go out there. I hear that. I yeah, hear that. It feels old. All right, uh, we've been we've been very not not incredibly sour, not as sour as some, but we try to keep it positive on this show, and uh, we've been a little bit sour on shows that, quite frankly, Taco and I haven't really seen. So we'll, let's shift into something that we probably won't be very sour on at all, and that is the G One climax. We're going to be very positive about the G One climax. Talk about the last weeks of matches, the last climax. week, last week of of matches. And also, uh, what's coming up in the uh, the final two nights here uh, for New Japan? Oh, now my sound bites aren't firing. My little thing isn't working here. Change the subject. A touch screen. That's magical. Yeah. New Japan Pro Wrestling. 
I'm not going to go over all of the results because, I mean, a lot of these have happened a week or so ago, over a week ago, but I just kind of want to go over the standout matches, What I what, f- matches I thought were really good. Uh, you can get r- results in a lot of places. NJPW1972.com has all the results from the G1, but I just want to go over uh, some matches that, uh, that I liked. Uh, going back over the last week. One thing I've noticed is that, obviously, it's uh, summertime, and a lot of these uh, arenas looks like uh, not only the wrestlers, but the fans are fanning themselves off, but the wrestlers coming out, even at the beginning stages of the match, look very hot and sweaty here in this uh, summer tournament. So. What do you mean, hot and sweaty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you that know that one. Uh, so going back to uh, last Wednesday, the uh, this, uh, the uh, August 2nd show for the B Block. Yeah, man. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> let me get the, uh, let me get the J- New Japan sounders up here. That, that'll might help here a little bit. Here we go. The B-Block. B-Block! Uh, go, from that show, a very good match. And uh, uh, Kenny Omega versus Evil. Uh, uh, very good. Again, these two going into this match both had eight points. Uh, Evil takes the, f- the fight outside very early in the, in the match. He peels away the mat. I didn't talk about this last week, did I? I don't remember. I don't it's think been so. so long. I don't think I did. Because this is, yeah, no, this was from when. I don't believe so. This was from Wednesday. Uh, so, no. Yeah, we, this would have been where we left off. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, we recorded Tuesday last week. So, yeah, this was from Wednesday. Uh, at the beginning of the match, the psychology felt a little bit odd because Omega was trying to be the heel, but the crowd was on his side. But it felt better later on when Evil did his home run chair shot uh, after a nice back and forth outside. Uh, Omega does a. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Omega slams the lower back onto the apron and hits a double stomp on the table uh, on top of Evil. He's, then he sets up the table outside. They do a big back and forth on the apron. Then Evil hits this modified STO through the table. His face is bleeding. Uh, crazy back and forth. Great near falls. Goes for his banshee mu- muzzle, Evil does, and then there's a rope break. Going into the finish, Evil looked out of it. Fucking, okay, what happened was, Kenny Omega tagged Evil with one of his V-trigger knees, knocked him out fucking cold. And there was a lot of controversy about this online because the referee didn't step in and try to stop the match, but it was a lot, of, it went it went by so fast, and it was so, it was so, it was, so what happened, he hits this, he hits him with the V-trigger, right? And then he's out, he's knocked out, Kenny Omega can't pick him up, he's, he's out. And so he, jo- he goes to try to cover him, but he's all tangled up in the ropes, so the referee can't make the count. And so he, he, he tries to, he, he stands him up, he tries to, or he finally kind of stumbles his way to his feet, Anyway, tries to knock him down with another like really light V trigger. He doesn't go down, so he's like, "Okay, I guess I got to hit him with the with the one winged angel." He, he struggles to get him up with the one winged angel because he's he's out on his feet, but he gets him up, hits him with the one winged angel as safely as he could, and pins him for the one two three. But uh, despite the scary uh, finish there, a really good match, four stars. I thought uh, Taco. Any Fuck yeah. thoughts on that one? Yeah. That was, um... I had actually uh, in my picks, I had evil going over on this one. So, uh, you know, for later results, it's kind of like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear that. Uh, and evil's been having a heck of a, the, the this last week for evil has been really, really good. Uh, we'll kind of yeah, get like, into I, 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 Everyone had, um, Sonata pegged out as a big breakout star of this yep. whole event, and fucking Evil's been tearing it up. Dude. Yeah, for for yeah, me too. I was just one of these guys that was looking forward to seeing Sonata. You know, not very high on Evil with the you know the Halloween gimmick coming out with the plastic sickle and the laser lights, but in the ring he has really shown up uh, mm-hmm. these, these last uh, last few nights of matches. So, uh, when I took your advice, Tommy, so I rocked. I, I was pretty high on Sonata in my picking because I just went blind. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, let's see from uh, from Friday the fourth of fourth uh, of uh, I keep forgetting August for some reason. <laughs> August fourth, we had a three and three quarter Nagata and Kota Ibushi match. Kota Ibushi has this new finisher that he's doing where uh, his opponent is on his knee on, on his knees, and uh, uh, Ibushi has. Uh, both of his arms locked in his in his hands, and he hits him with this knee strike to the face. So it's kind of like Kenny Omega's 
V trigger, except uh, uh, Ibushi is holding both of the guy's hands, and I believe it's pronounced uh, the Kami. He would. It's, I believe it's pronounced the Kami Goey. Uh, but it's it's just an, a crazy looking great finisher. Uh, again, these two had a great, uh, just a great match. Ibushi did get the win, so Nagata remaining winless here, but uh, Kota Ibushi getting up to uh, eight points in that match. Bunch of three star matches on that show. Naito got a win over Zack Sabre uh, with uh, with Destino uh, getting him tied with eight points there. So not a not a ton that sticks out from that show. Uh, Saturday was uh, was the night to talk about Saturday was the Night of Upsets. This is from uh, the 5th of August. Uh, a fun See, this is breaking news to me, by the way. The Night of Upsets, you say? Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, Katz, I wanted to talk about this, this young lion in the opening match, a rare singles match for a young lion, the big jacked-up Brock Lesnar of New Japan, uh, Katsuya Kitamura. <laughs> he uh, he had a singles match with Chase Owens from the Bullet uh, Bullet Club. Katsuya Kitamura's got a new haircut. He chops really fucking hard, and he looks like he should murder Chase Owens, but of course, he's a young lion. Chase Owens, the veteran, uh, the he, nevertheless, he's the Bullet Club job guy but every once in a while in a while he gets to get a win over a young lion and he did uh here in this opener all right so i mentioned before even though it was the night of upsets uh, the young lion didn't get the win but as far as the b block matches here in in on the uh, from saturday uh yano of course had to beat tamatanga both of those guys had four points there uh so of, of uh, just a, n- nothing much to talk about there but anytime yano gets a win it's like okay then kojima <laughs> Zero points. Had a match with Sonata. Finally got a win. Uh, very good fun match there. Uh, then the uh, Michael Elgin kind of upset Minoru Suzuki. Elgin kind of had not having the greatest tournament. Does have a big win over Kenny Omega, but he's only had two wins in the whole tournament, whereas Suzuki had uh, four wins and eight points. Michael Elgin got the big win versus Suzuki there. Uh, then. Wow. Big win here. Juice Robinson defeats Kenny Omega. Juice with only one victory. Omega with 10 points. Uh, Omega's going for the one-winged angel late in the match. Juice hits him with the inside cradle. One, two, three. I fucking love how Juice sold this. He's like, holy fuck! (laughs) He's just like, he's acting (laughs) surprised. He's running around. He's hugging people in the audience. Uh, Omega selling it for him was awesome. Yeah, yeah, like Omega's like, dude, if he's that happy, I'm happy for him. He's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, it sucks, but man, that guy's fucking, he's over the moon about it. He's doing. I'm so angry right now. I literally uh, have Juice Robinson crossed out for my pick and, and obviously went with Kenny Omega instead. So I, re- <laughs> I had Juice Robinson. I could have called this one. I was it. stoked. I got that one. Nice. Nice. Good call there, there Taco. Uh, but I, I just want to talk about this match for a second. Omega disrespects Juice in the in, early in the match. He he doesn't take this guy seriously. But Juice is really good and aggressive. Omega hits a uh, a superplex from or not a superplex but a regular suplex from the ring to the floor. Juice kind of lands on his feet and sells the shit out of his, his knee. Uh, Juice that's kind of been a recurring injury that he's been selling throughout the tournament. Omega teases a V trigger. Juice hits a big lariat and an avalanche powerbomb for a near fall. Uh, he counters Pulp Friction with a Snapdragon suplex Omega does. Great back and forth sequence. Ends with a reverse Rana for a near fall. And I thought that that was it when he hit that reverse Rana. It was so well done. I'm like, this is it. This match is over. And then fucking Juice fucking hits that inside cradle out of the one-winged angel. So fun match. Four stars. Definitely gotta check it out. And big win for Juice. Definitely. Then, main event of this show, we were just talking about Evil. Evil versus Okada. Okada hasn't been beaten in like a year. <laughs> Fucking Evil hits him with the everything. He's evil. The STO after a great fucking sequence. What a great match. This is the match yeah. we were talking about where uh, Okada goes for his signature high cross body over the barricade on the floor, and but Evil just whips the fucking chair right at his head. Uh, same thing that, that, uh, that Strowman and uh, Roman Reigns did on Monday Night Raw except this wasn't a padded office chair. It was like, you know, a hard plastic uh, <laughs> audience chair or whatever. Uh, so, but yeah, just a really fun, uh, great match there. Uh, from Sunday, um, let's see here. 
Uh, Kota Ibushi beat Yoshihashi. Nothing much to talk about there, but it was one of Yoshihashi's better matches. But again, Ibushi uh, featuring his Kamigoi to get the win there. Uh, main event of that one, three and three quarters, just under four stars for me. Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi with ten points, uh, defeating Tomohiro Ishii, who, uh, had, who had eight points there. Uh, again, Ishii looking for, to get the upset there, looking to stay alive in the tournament, but uh, nevertheless, uh, Tanahashi getting the win with two uh, gorgeous high fly flows. Uh, but yeah, a very fun match between those two. Uh, what is Tanahashi at right now? Tanahashi right now is at 12 points. He's at the Jesus. Him and Naito are at 12 points. I'll get into the the final standings here in just a minute. Uh we got to talk the B block semifinal. So again, uh this was the la- this is from Tuesday. Uh, and you know what? Actually, I didn't see a lot of this show. This is the one I kind of just sped through today. Uh, but the one that stood out to me, <laughs> obviously, the main event, Okada versus Minoru Suzuki. Uh, Minoru kind of fighting for his tournament life here, but really kind of out of the, uh, uh, kind of out of it points wise. Okada with 12 points uh, going into this match. Uh, and this was a hell of a match. Taco and I kind of alluded to it earlier with the, the fucking, the slap fighting in this match. Jeez. Non-stop. The, oh my like, god! There's some Boz Rune fucking open palm going on right there. Right, yeah. old fashioned slap right to the face. Yeah, it was it was brutal. Uh, there was a few times where Okada just kind of took a knee and took a step back. I'm like, oh, he needs that. <laughs> yeah, whether it was selling or not, it was like, whoa! <laughs> it was just it was just insane. Um, but, uh, this one I actually had a buddy of mine over and I, oh. I watched the, the other matches, uh, previously. And this was the only one I needed to see throughout the day. So I was kind of gave him a rundown of how the G1, you know, kind of works and everything. And yeah, that was the first match he saw. And he's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> At one point, Okada hits the gotch pile driver, which is one of Suzuki's moves. Then Suzuki hits the tombstone pile driver, which is one of Okada's moves. Uh, Suzuki wor- uh, works uh, wicked leg- uh, late submissions in the match, just moving from one to another to another, trying to keep Okada away from the ropes. He works a really long sleeper hold, then stands Okada up and just slaps the shit out of him until he falls down, stands him up again, slaps the shit out of him again till he falls down. Uh, Okada hits uh, two short arms, has the wrist control, gets that near fall, but he can't cover him right away. That's why he gets the near fall. Then the insane slap fight to end this match was, like I, like I said, just fucking crazy, these two back and forth. And it, it felt like Okada... Could, he was slapping the shit out of Suzuki back just as hard, but Suzuki would just um, never go fucking down. Okada slaps were cute, <laughs> but Suzuki was just fucking daggers. Like they, they were cute slaps. He was, he was throwing them. <laughs> he, he had some, he had some good ones in there. I, I, I showed up to a slap fight with Suzuki and fucking looking good. <laughs> Okada finally hits the Rainmaker very late in the match, but he's so out of it, he can't make the cover. This one goes to a 30-minute draw, so one point for each. And I don't think any of us picked a draw in the tournament, so I don't think anybody gets uh, gets uh, pick em points in that one there. But uh, I-, I picked a draw between um, Okada and Omega, so ah. I'm like, fuck now. <laughs> so, yeah, that kind of throws... Well, actually, the sta- now the way the things stand now, it really comes down to your two... Uh, to- your two Tokyo Dome main events again. The main events, yeah. Yeah, uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus uh, Tetsuya Naito. Both of those guys have 12 points. The nearest two are Bad Luck Fale and Kota Ibushi with 10, but with tiebreakers and everything, it doesn't really matter uh, because, let's see here, yeah, Ibushi lost to Naito, so whether Naito wins or loses... It doesn't matter because, uh, it, like, so if, if Naito wins, he's got uh, 14, so it doesn't matter. But if he loses, he's got 12. Ibushi lost to him, so it doesn't matter. Same thing with Bad Luck. Well, Bad Luck Fale actually, didn't he beat? No, he lost to Tanahashi. So neither of those guys matter. He also lost to, uh, no, he did have a victory over Naito, to, so he could get to 12, which doesn't matter because one of those guys with 12 points is getting to 14, so the 
that doesn't matter. Even if they go to a draw, mm-hmm. it's 13 points, so it goes down to well, then it comes down to tiebreakers between those two guys. So Tanahashi lost to Kota Ibushi, uh, and that was it. No, and Zack Saber Jr. and Naito lost to Fale. Uh, and Tomohiro Ishii. So, uh, so it would come down to whatever those tiebreakers uh, come out to be there. But if if they go to a tie, but I don't think they'll do two ties. But you never know; they certainly could. In the uh, in the B block, it's Okada with thirteen points and Omega with twelve. And the same thing here: tiebreakers come into play. It really comes down to those two because if Omega wins, he's got fourteen. The n- nearest next point winner is Evil with ten points, who does have that victory over uh, uh, over uh, over Okada uh, over Okada, but uh, Okada with thirteen so points. Hey. Well, go ahead, Taco. That's just so weird to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Evil has the win over Okada. Right. Now it's just like, <laughs> thing, like oh, when's he get his title match now? Like, fuck, man. He will. Get, he he'll definitely get one sometime this oh, fall. Yeah. They're gonna do. They've got three shows in September. They've got the King of Pro Wrestling. I think is in October or November. Uh, and yeah, they've they've got a big show every month leading up to uh, late November and early December. D- December is the World Tag League, which is a, like a tag team tournament thing. Uh, so they won't have a big single any any big singles matches in there. Uh, so it will be sometime in the fall here where Evil will definitely get his shot. Uh, for sure. So, but yeah, it comes down to Okada versus um, uh, Omega and uh, Tanahashi versus Naito in the, in the in these last two matchups. Uh, so, but uh, we got English commentary on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It'll be, it'll be exciting to see see it play out. I'm sorry if you hear my dog in the background. <laughs> nope i didn't I didn't hear your dog. So. Uh, that was uh, that was fine there. Again, in my uh, pick'em, I've got uh, I got Omega going all the way, but I had Omega and Ibushi in in the finals. In my in my secondary unofficial prediction, I had Okada and Tanahashi going to the finals with uh, mm. Tanahashi actually uh, getting the or no, I had, uh, Okada getting the win. I think it doesn't matter. It's a secondary prediction anyway. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I did want to mention too, also from this, uh, this B block semifinal, uh, juice Robinson versus Toru Yano, a nothing match. Didn't really matter. Could have put Toru Yano over, but I think, uh, they gave juice the win with pulp friction, which was a somewhat predictable thing there. But if I think if juice had a lackluster tournament and nobody really cared about him, I could see, I could have seen them just putting Yano over there and giving him an extra, win there but uh I, I i thought it was a nice late feel good win for juice late in the tournament getting him up to up to up to six points you know getting him three wins there was a was a nice touch there you know who i've been uh liking out of this whole event go ahead is, uh tamatanga he's been tearing it up man yeah, he's got a nice. Fucking like he's really he's grabbing it right now. He's going for it. He's he's got a he's got a, a good attitude. He's he's got a different kind of in ring style, uh, and yeah, he's it's been it's kind of been nice to see him develop too. Uh, I also liked Elgin getting a win over uh, Evil, who just uh, defeated yeah. Okada. So that makes for some interesting matchups down the road too. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see how things play out over the next few nights here. Uh, let's uh, let's change it up here. Let's get into some Ring of Honor, shall we? Change the subject. I'm all late on my uh, Saunders here. <laughs> anyway, this week uh, they built up for a couple of weeks here. It was the big Ring of Honor title match between Cody Rhodes and Christopher Daniels. Two out of oh, three falls. Up. Joe, you saw yeah. this, right? Uh, here's yes, the thing. I, I saw the beginning of the show, uh, but I didn't get a chance to actually see the match. Uh, I imagine it, it was probably pretty predictable with, uh, with Cody Rhodes retaining here. But, uh, uh, Joe, go ahead and talk about what was that? Was that, was that the, was that the outcome that everybody uh, thought was going to happen there? Yeah, pretty much. And it did happen. But what I liked about it was Daniels didn't get a fall. Cody Rhodes won it straight up. Really? Low. That's yeah. an interesting touch. Oh. Wow. And then Very. one thing that I really liked about it was that opening promo. I mean, like, just, I just want to talk about that. Yes. The fact of letting the, uh, Christopher Daniels and Kazarian go off on the crowd and, you know, the, the, with the execs not allowing the footage until now. And I, I, I really like that touch. It's just, 
it's Ring of Honor adding a little bit more of the almost the WWE factor, but still doing it their way. And it really took advantage of the story that the that the audience gave them. You know, the the audience turned on Christopher Daniels. They got on Cody and Rhodes. You even side. talked about it. So so yeah, it was the natural thing to do. Just have them go heel on it. I loved Cody's promo. So they totally flipped Daniels and Kazarian. Yep, they flipped Daniels and Kazarian back over to heels. Cody is still kind of doing the same thing though. Like Cody's promo was like, ah, I'm I'm a sports entertainer, you know, doing doing that. He was doing like the sit down promo with the suit and the title belt over yeah, his he shoulder. Didn't change a damn thing. Yeah, he was still he was still doing the same thing. Here's the thing, like. He he comes out, he talks that shit, and you know it's kind of the same thing. He speaks every week, but I, I love the the snaps, or, you know, like the, the the tweets he's doing, the fucking um, just walking out with the big old fucking cigar in his mouth, yeah. <laughs> and he has a world championship to back it up. We look at someone like Bray Wyatt, who comes out and essentially does the same thing, the same typical speech in the ring, mumbo jumbo, fucking gets to the ring. What does he have to show? Nothing. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So, so yeah. it's just at least Cody uh, Rhodes is backing it up, you know, like it, that's what his character is, that's what his character does. It's like Del he's like Del Rio in a sense. Right on, <laughs> right on. Joe, talk about the the match itself a little bit. Any bullet club shenanigans or anything like that, or was it just pretty much straight up? Cody fucking It was It was pretty much straight up. I mean there was uh uh a lot of it, would, like, there was just a lot of Daniel's offense, but then the thing about it was Cody weaseling his way into things, you know, and just sneaking his way in. I believe he got one, this, uh, uh, the, he's been using a submission recently. I cannot remember for the okay. life of me. Okay. But uh, he got a submission win, and then he got a pinfall, and just, like, the look on his face and the, the huge-ass smile because he was <laughs> looking Daniel's right in the face. Of just like I did it and I proved it to you. It was just it was fun. Yeah, that was even an interesting dynamic going into it with Cody being the first one to bring up the idea of let's do a two out of three falls match. Uh, so that that yeah, really interesting uh, matchup there. I'll have to go back and check it out just because I didn't get a, a chance to. The only other big thing from this show was Silas and Beer City Bruiser out there doing their oh, thing. Yeah. Uh, Forty three days now, but then finally Jay Lethal uh, comes back and attacks, goes goes crazy off on him with a chair. Security comes out there, he takes out security. They they save like the skinniest security security guard for last. He comes out to the ring, and, and Jay Lethal is just like no, just go away like he just he point he <laughs> shoes him he doesn't hit him doesn't take him out he just points get out and then he finally just kind of gets out and so i thought that was really funny uh but yeah uh lethal is back to uh, continue his feud with the beer city bruiser there so yeah fun show from ring of honor this week Let's get into uh, kind of the last couple of weeks of NXT because we didn't get a chance to talk about the big Kyle O'Reilly debut. And so we got to talk about Change the subject. subject. So here is NXT. NXT. <laughs> so yeah, let's kind of rewind just a little bit back to next week. It was the big, uh, the, the, the highly uh, spoiled <laughs> of, of uh, 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 debut of Kyle O'Reilly, the much anticipated Kyle O'Reilly debut uh, versus Alistair Black in the main event. I actually, I really liked this match, and I heard some critics online saying that they just kind of thought it was a match. Nothing really stood out. Alistair Black beat him. They, a lot of people liked, or they, they were saying that they liked the uh, the Bobby Fish match better. What were your guys' thoughts on this one? I'm curious. Taco, go ahead. The cut with Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, Kyle O'Reilly. Did we talk about that last week? No, no, we didn't. We didn't get to it because it was no. On we were saving it. Oh fuck! Yeah, I thought I, I thought I stuck out way more than the Bobby Fish match personally. Yeah, me too. I I liked I I just liked Kyle O'Reilly working his style, kind of bringing like like that uh, that MMA his feel that a MMA <laughs> feel early in the match, like going for the fist bump, like right off the bat, and instead of the the, the handshake or whatever. What were your yeah, thoughts? The whole no, sorry, like the whole match, fucking yeah, it was right down Kyle O'Reilly's, you know, lane. It, you know, it definitely stuck out way more than Bobby. Who the fuck is saying that shit? <laughs> Just some negative Nancys, I guess. Uh, what were your? What did you think of the debut, uh, Joe? I thought it was awesome, and the and in the fact that one they kept Alistair Black undefeated in this sense, and it didn't take anything away from Kyle O'Reilly at all. 
the yeah, other I, part I like about it uh, that in the sense of the match was that it felt like almost like a very British match almost with a lot of that mat wrestling and everything. There wasn't a lot, a whole lot of big like uh, spots in the match. It was just like ground and pound and, and it was nice. Yeah, it was Kyle O'Reilly working his strong style. Yeah, mixing in the British style, mixing in the Japanese strong style, uh, mixing in some MMA influences. I, I loved it. It was O'Reilly bringing his style to WWE, which is what was what, which is what I feared most when Kyle O'Reilly went to WWE. But again, uh, 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 Shinsuke Nakamura's first match, everybody loved it too. So we'll see what they do uh, going forward here. But I, I really enjoyed it. Made Alistair Black look great going into whatever he's doing going forward, and I thought it made uh, O'Reilly look strong in his debut. What's next, do you think, for, for Kyle O'Reilly? Do they team him back up with Bobby Fish, maybe going into the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic coming up this fall? What do you think, Joe? Oh, I didn't. I'll be honest with you. I haven't even thought that far ahead on it. Taco? But that, would, that would be <laughs> awesome. I'd love to see yeah, that. Yeah, you know, um... I think that would be the uh, proper thing to kind of do since you got them both there and, you know, the the, the t- tag division or the tag tournaments coming up now. And, yeah, you might as well get some tag teams going on. Look, you know, we just got DIY split up. And, you know, kind of by that time, uh, Ciampa should be kind of returning at that point, too, to kind of fit in with the tournament in a sense. In a single Hopefully. Hopefully oh. it's not uh, longer Hopefully. than that, but we'll see. Uh, so this week's NXT, again, I didn't get a chance to see it. I'm just kind of reading a report that I saw on it, but uh, I know you got to see it, Joe, and I'm, I'm very interested to go check it out and, and see what happened. But, uh, uh, the, the big news, I guess, uh, I'm kind of reading this off a of wrestling observer. Uh, Roderick Strong's going to wrestle Drew McIntyre next week. And if he wins versus McIntyre, he will get a match with Bobby Roode after takeover. So uh, this is regardless whether or not Bobby Roode keeps the title at takeover. And uh, so just a chance for uh, Roderick Strong's story to continue here, I guess. Joe, what did uh, what did you make of this segment? I, I thought the exact same thing. Like, I, I, I feel like Bobby Roode is still going to walk out champion. I don't, I, I'm kind of turning, I, I was on Drew McIntyre's back on this one, but I really think Bobby Bobby Roode's going to walk out with it again, making that title viable at, in that match as well. Taco, what do you think? Yeah, I'm with you. Actually, I saw this promo. Um, I got, I got halfway through NXT, okay. so I don't know what happened after this. But, um, yeah, I thought actually it was a really good promo. Everyone was awesome. And then when uh, Roderick Strong's music hit, too, it was kind of surprising because, you know, um, uh, Bobby Roode was the one that threw out that ultimatum of, uh, oh, you want to fight me? fight this guy first you know uh, sure M- mcintyre's like okay and you know regal is out there and he was like no 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 i'm get it straight i'm the one that makes the matches around here you know and you know bobby Roode's like why strong wants it mcintyre wants it we are nxt they <laughs> want it you know so he's just milking that, the we are nxt thing you know and McIntyre's just like make just make the damn match, you know, and so yeah, the the promos from everybody in there was super awesome, and yeah, it's, it was definitely worth watching. Okay, uh, sounds like Eric Young is back, and he was helping Sanity beat down the authors of Pain, so that was neat, yep. I guess. Uh, Johnny Gargano is going to take on Andrade Cien Almas at uh, Takeover Brooklyn. So uh, awesome, very interesting. That's going to be an awesome match. I think that's opening match for the night. Right on, right on. We had the debut of the Street Profits. They defeated Chris and JC Metro. Uh, Joe, what are your thoughts on this? The uh, the re debut of of the Street Profits. I guess Dawkins is uh, still wearing two headbands for some reason, and also still stirring that pot. Great. <laughs> oh, it's it's just, it's i mean like i'm glad for him it actually wasn't that bad you know it's obviously a debut match for a newer tag team two guys working together and everything like that so we'll see where it goes they they have the personality honestly i've actually really enjoyed the snapchat vignettes they've been kind of fun you know right on. reminds you of crime time without being so racist taco did you get a chance <laughs> to see that one or yeah i did i did see that match too and you know it'd be a fun another tag team in there uh, looks like Danny Birch uh, took on Oni Lorcan again. I'm very much looking forward to going back and watching this one. <laughs> so much fun. J- just as good as the first one. Huh? Are we going to get a third match between these two at TakeOver? 
I w- I don't know if it'll be takeover, but we'll see a match between these two down the road. It's kind of again, there wasn't any you know disrespect. They did the shake the hand at the end. It was it was fun. Right on, right on. And then it was uh, Andrade Cien almost uh, winning over No Way Jose uh, on, on NXT. What did you think of that one, Joe? Um, I mean, it was a decent match, but I just feel like I feel like No Way Jose had to have done something wrong. I like it, He disappeared from television during that Sanity feud. We've seen him very rarely, and he's usually been losing pretty quickly in those very instant spots. So it, was, it, just, it wasn't... It wasn't a no way Jose match in my mind. I hear that, but Andrade I, looked good as well. Yeah, I've I've enjoyed the Andrade push, the new story for him, uh, and I kind of understand the no way Jose kind of getting pushed down the card. They just kind of he made his debut. Everybody's into him. He's he's got the he's got the fun NXT gimmick, but there's really nothing else there right now. So I don't necessarily you're mind new, mind no him. No way Jose, you're always going to be a joke. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. If your name is No Way Jose or Fandango or the Vel- Velveteen Dream, uh, just well, and the- it's not like his matches really, you know, fly off the you know handle. You don't see there's nothing special there. He's got he's a bigger, taller guy that's got some speed, but he hasn't progressed really fast with his move set. Right, right. He he, he kind of has the things that he does in the ring. Nothing's nothing really stands out. You know, he just kind of does what he does, and so. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good point there. So, all right, anything else for NXT that uh, might have missed there? I just had a funny image of like Jason Joran with the makeup. Like, would you suplex me? I'd suplex me. I'd suplex me hard. <laughs> I can't think of a better way to end the show. Uh, not only with <laughs> that, but uh, in the in the in the in honor of strong honor, we got to end it with the Kojima tweet, of course. Now it's time for the Satoshi Kojima Tweet of the Week. You can follow Kojima on Twitter at Cozy underscore Lariat. Kojima, of course, a member of New Japan. who uh, is, He was in the G1, his tag team partner, uh, Hiroshi Tenzan, and they formed the tag team Ten Cozy. Uh, so there's that. And here, <laughs> here's the tweet. I will go to Osaka by bus. Fight today as well. I will be careful about injuries. Always thanks to bread clubs all over the world. <laughs> bread club for life. So, that's a good way to end the show. And not only that, we're only right over an hour. So <laughs> we didn't have the, the extravaganza of last week. We didn't get into Lucha Underground this week, but... Uh, again, I haven't seen this week's show. I heard it. Go ahead, Taco. I heard it was good. So okay, well, yeah, I'll have to get into that. Last week's know. was decent, so uh, we'll uh, we'll be upgrading our uh, updating our brackets last weekend with the G one wrapping up this weekend. There won't be as much insanity to talk about. Although, looking forward to this weekend's matches as well for that. So, uh, if you want to go check out back episodes of this show, go to bestprowrestlingpodcast.com. Please, if you like the show, share it on social media at BPW Podcast on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Best Pro Wrestling Podcast, and uh, what was the other one I was going to say? Uh, oh, yeah, go <laughs> the iTunes. Uh, and dicks. Rate, review, and subscribe uh, on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Tommy Striker, spell Striker with a Y. Taco, where can people find you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at HGREV Taco. And you can follow me, Joe, at JoeBPWP. That's at Joe Best Pro Wrestling Podcast. That's going to do it for this week. Thanks for checking it out. Bye. Peace. Crash of the Titus. Ha ha, Clinton Dix. I'm not burning with you. What I said was stop talking. I- Weird question, is Jinder Mahal a cruiserweight? My botch. Is that the cat? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's the one that doesn't like to be petted on the butt, but oh. I still pet her on the butt. That'll make for good podcasting. <laughs> <laughs>